Welcome to Melbourne Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today's topic is um, again based on an article that was published last week on Tuesday. That's the article is named Rogue Red Reloaded. And um, there have been other articles before that one, which we can guess from the title. Uh, and Rogue Red is, um, there's a new variant of this malware and the article discusses what's new and what's what has changed and um, also they say there are some similarities to another malware family that they share code. Uh, the interesting part for me was that I wanted to get the payload and I didn't have this file. It wasn't on virus total at that point in time. It's there now, I think. Um, but we can get the payload from the other files. Those are named droppers here. They actually are no droppers though. Um, but you will see, um, well, I will explain to you why that is. Uh, here, I took the third dropper, dropper right here and then uh, unpacked the payload. So how did I do that? First off, I analyzed this with Podex Analyzer and the uh, this is actually quite quite good um, malware to learn from because this file right here it's not obfuscated and um, that makes it quite easy for beginners I would say all right so um, if you take a look at this first off first off the um, visualization will show you that there's a huge resource part and these resources are packed so it could be that these contain the actual payload or maybe they contain something else and um, here we can also see yeah the entropy is quite high for the resource section um, and uh, there are the imports now in the imports uh, listing you will find imports that are very typical for injection of um, well either of code or uh, yeah code injection um, and they are also listed in the anomalies section an anomalies list and all of these together they paint a pretty clear picture of what kind of injection is happening right here so we have a create process which will be called first then uh, to, to create another process usually in suspended mode then they call virtual alloc uh, to get some memory from this other process and then use write process memory on that allocated memory to write the data into the form process and then using create remote thread they will uh, execute this other process as and also tell them where to start the execution like create remote thread takes um, an address parameter that says where to start execution so um, with that we can already try to find the right way. Also check out this process injection chart if you haven't already. So in this case, it would be like this way um, using create process and then one of those, either this or that. Uh, though we didn't see the unmet view of section in there. Um, right process memory create remote thread. So we guess it's this way. I will start this in 6x62dbg and um, we have a tab with symbols here. You go to that and click on kernel32.dll. There's the create process export. Double click and now you can set a breakpoint on that because it should be called first if they use that for the injection. 
So let's just try this and run. Okay, it opens up a an image. Um, the <laughs> the images are explained in the article in case you're interested. Um, and now we are here at this location. We see it wants to create a process named cmd.exe. The process is not there yet. Here's the rook red. There's no chat process for that. But it will be there once we are at this location. So let's run until uh, that and step over. And now you see cmd.exe is there. Okay, we will step two times. So we step out of the create process call. And at this point, we see the neatly written code for the injection part, right? So it calls create process, virtual alloc, write process memory, and create remote thread. So those are the main APIs used for the injection. And there are two um, APIs you can use to get um, the code that is being injected. Now, write process memory has the buffer, which contains the data that should be written to the other process. So here you can see the code in the buffer. And create remote thread has a start address where the code execution will start in the other process. So that's also where um, your code has been written to that, that was injected. Um, so both of them are possible and I think we should take the second one so we can continue debugging on the other process. So let's do that and run to uh, this create women thread call. We can see this is the um, address where um, the code execution will start. And this address is not for the current process, but for the other process, right? It's for the cmd.exe. So we want to attach to this other process before we continue. We open up another instance of that and say attach cmd.exe attach. And now, um, what was the address again? We go to that address. 260000. This might be a different address if you try this on your machine. So even if you try it several times, every time will be a different address. So just take that one and uh, 26000, what am I doing? Okay, we will go to expression, da -da, da -da -da -da. all right. And that's the address, we place a breakpoint right here go to the rogue red sample and say just run okay now it terminated rogue red terminated uh, we can see now rogue red is indeed not there anymore but cmd.exe is still running and we also um, uh, stopped execution at the breakpoint that we set so here we are <clears throat> I had one bad thing happening. I pressed run and I had no breakpoint. So um, I have to I had to redo the first part again. Um, we are at the great remote thread call again. So 19000 is the location this time uh, where I already set the breakpoint and here we are. So here we are. Um, now, from the article, we know that this is shellcode, which will decode a PE file. So, um, somewhere in the article, it will say so. That's the hard there. Uh, once executed, the shell code would decode the PE file, which is the, the payload we want. So we are looking for a loop that will decode a PE image. And um, such a loop will have um, some kind of uh, decoding, decrypting operation, which uh, is interesting for us. Okay, so if we step through the code, we see the first loop right here. 
And there's also an XOR operation um, and it points at ESI. And ESI is here 19003F. That will be a different address for you. But if you look uh, here, it's starting here. So the decoding operation F starting kind of here. Um, the decoding operation affects the code that follows right after. Uh, so we can simply see how the instructions change right below. And that's not the P file that's being decoded there. Um, simply set a breakpoint after the loop and to jump out of it. And then you see, okay, it just decrypted these instructions below, um, which might be part of the decryption process. Okay. We will step through and uh, see what we find. Here's another loop, but this loop doesn't do anything, just moves some data uh, from somewhere to somewhere. Not interesting. We set a breakpoint here to jump out of the loop. Okay, we jump into this call and see, uh, look out for the more XOR operations here. Um, that's interesting. Okay, you see here's a loop that goes up to that XOR operation. So this is an interesting one. Again, ESI plus the counter. So the counter will um, increase every time. And that's the location. We will follow in our dump one and set a breakpoint here. That didn't work. Please set a breakpoint. I guess that what that's what happened before that. And then set a breakpoint after the loop in case you jump out of it. And um, if you press F9 and look into the hex view, you can see how this. Uh, PE image is being decrypted. So this is what we want. Remove the breakpoint, jump out of the loop, and you see our PE image right here. That's also in 19.0 something in my case. Again, and your uh, computer will be a different address, but take note of that address and then find that area in the memory map. That's here. Oh, sorry. Here, um, right click and dump to file. So we say dumped.exe and just close the debugger. We don't need that anymore. And um, open this up in a hex editor because you see that um, the PE image starts later in the memory dump, so we remove the junk before that. Yes, remove that and save that. And now we have our payload. Uh, to verify, you may want to look for some stuff you find in the article. For example, there is a mention of Dropbox API. So simply search for that Dropbox. Okay can't find it, so check the Unicode string, say search direction all, and there it is. So, okay, that's indeed our payload, and um, we made, we did it. So that's what I wanted to show you in this article. Again, uh, I think you may want to proceed analyzing this uh, payload and see if you also come to the same conclusions as this article does, uh, I think articles are a great way to learn analyzing malware because you can compare what you find in there and you can also find, an, uh, sometimes you find addresses in the screenshots so uh, or in the, in the explanation so you can find the same location or you search for strings that you find in the article to find the same location and compare. All right, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.